All right, you can open your Bible and turn to the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2. Or 2 Peter 2, yes. And we want to start our lesson off there. And it's, it's concerning <clears throat> what we are contending with and what they were contending with and what the world will always continue with as long as it stands. Because <clears throat> the devil is much on the the proud he got his prophets out and they are here for one reason that's to interfere with our <clears throat> lives and so we want to study just a few minutes with this but in chapter 2 verse 1 uh, chapter 2 ver uh, verse 1 I'll get this in a minute but there were false prophets among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately will bring in damnable heresy, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now we see here that as Peter is writing this letter here, and of course I tried to give a little background on these two last books that Peter wrote, and he had a, a terrible lot of persecution on uh, from other denominations or false uh, or uh, false people, but he had. He was, he was troubled on every side from these, but he it proved out to be that he, he, was, he was right and they were wrong. Anyway, he says here that there's false prophets among the people. And we know this morning, even as we uh, look out on the world and as we listen to uh, the things that is going on in the world, we, we see that there is false prophets. And the false prophet is here for one thing, and that is to dis disturb God's people and to Amen. lead them in the right, lead them in the wrong direction. And so he says uh, in verse uh, 1, he says, As there shall be false teachers among you, and, and, I, can't, and I, I don't want to condemn, I don't want to call them names or nothing like this, but what God's word says is true. Amen. And it says here that there's going to be false teachers among you. And listen, you be careful this morning, and uh, and I know that you do, but it's a, it's a, it's advice, and Peter wrote it down, and he got it from God. But he says here, you beware of these false prophets and these false teachers, because they're very very shrewd. And it says here that they will privately bring in damnable heresy. Right. And so. They've got every way in the world of their conversations and all this to get you involved in things like this. And they will eventually ease things into your life or into your conversation where that you either have to say, no, I don't want to see that, or no, I don't want to hear that, or or just, I wish you'd go. And so that's that's the, the, the opportunities that we have to just to let them know that we I don't want to hear this stuff. But he says, hear this privately is secretly. And they're doing it. They're doing it so so cunning and all that you don't realize what's going on. And you, uh, a lot of times, that we that are God's people, and we that study God's word, and we that hear God's word, listen, we can hear it and we can catch it, and we know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, here's the thing: I am this morning speaking to a. a a nation somewhere, a people somewhere that don't know all these things. And I would that they would listen that they, and I could warn them because they're over there more probably and, and stronger and and, uh, and than they are here in the United States. But we, we need to we need to be much in prayer for other countries and and, and uh, pray for them that they would uh, hear God's word and we can make it possible and that we can send it to them, that we can preach it to them, because that's what God told us to do, go into the world, all the world, and preach the gospel. Amen. And to teach the gospel. So he said here that they will bring in damnable heresy, even denying the Lord. And so you <clears> can imagine, <throat> you can imagine someone denying the Lord before you. I mean, hey, I'd run him off in a heartbeat. Amen. Uh, or, or I try to tell him, hey, you're wrong in what. But the thing of it is, he's just got this damnable heresy and all these things like that, that, that he's talking about here. They don't understand, they don't know, they don't study the Bible because, listen, I believe they're of the non elect, just as sure as this world. 
And here he says here, they will even deny the Lord that bought them mm -hmm. and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And you can imagine Brother Larry preached a little bit the other night about this, uh, the, all of the pain and agony that Jesus Christ uh, uh, suffered while he was here on this earth to let people know that he uh, come from heaven and that, that he uh, was God's child and that he was bringing all of this to these people to, to hear it. But listen, he says here that they will, they will, they will deny it. They will, mm -hmm. they will and, and you know, listen, we've got, we've got uh, churches right today that they, they don't know it, but they're denying, they're denying that, that, uh, that Jesus died for them because mm -hmm. listen, they are, they are trusting in other types of, of, of worldly things and of other people, and they put these people on a higher grade than they do Jesus Christ, and they just push him, Jesus, down to the side and say, uh, I, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. and, and they, but they'll look forward to, or look towards this one that's a, a, a man a man pleaser and mm -hmm. they'll, they'll trust what he has to say and so this is how that what Peter's talking about he says and in and, and, and this he says and many shall follow their pernicious ways and I, I, I the susceptible ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of so it's it, we're seeing here that these people will 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 follow this and hey what well, some of your biggest your biggest congregations in the United States and in, a, in the world even and, and look at the way that they treat the people uh, even in uh, Mexico and places like that they build their big temples right. and, uh, and the, the peasants and all give them the money and they think if they don't give it to them they won't get to be prayed out of hell mm -hmm. and so this is what's going on uh, in our in our countries and 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 they're they're being deceived and he says here many of them are going to follow with that and so if they follow this they're going to they're going to fall into a, a sinful lust they're going to fall into a worldly lust and they're going to die thinking that they've got they've got assurance that they can be uh, called out of hell, prayed out of hell, or purgatory, or or wherever they think they go to, and they've got this assurance. And people, uh, they're 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 feeling hell full. Amen. And so this morning, uh, it's a dangerous situation, and they need to be told. And through covetousness, shall they with fringe words make merchandise of you? And when you say making merchandise of you, they they a merchant is what he does. He sells and buys and sells and buys and makes profit. Listen, they will they will they will def defeat you through uh, vain words and things of this nature, and they will they will use you as a merchant uses uh, merchandise. And so he says they're going to do this, and whose uh, and and uh, and whose judgment now of a long time lingereth or it's it's not idle and and that's one thing we need to understand this morning about being idle god's people gets idle amen but i'll guarantee you this morning that if you if we had some way of comparing the two the lost with the saved or the lost with church people you'll find out that the 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 idle ones are the church people more so mm -hmm. than the, the devil's uh, congregation because listen he's much stronger mm -hmm. and he's got something to work with that we can't control and that's our body uh -huh. and uh, he, he he lays these things in our on our heart or in our minds and things of this nature and the flesh dearly loves to do it uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's sad to say but uh, my, my flesh hasn't got anything to do with God. I don't have anything to do with God. Right. Because it's lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something this morning that uh, we don't like to think about is our flesh being lost. But the thing of it is, we know what's going to happen to it. Uh, and it's going to go into the back to the earth where it comes from. And uh, our soul is the only thing that we can depend on being in the presence of the Lord until we get a glorified body. And so we we have we have a, a uphill push, but we through grace and through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can get we can get there and we can climb these hills and these mountains Amen. that we have before us. But these these people here that he's talking about the covetous, which uh, we use fringe words and all these things, 
listen, they have an easy going. Uh, and uh, of course, they, they, can, they can yield to this body and, and please the body, and they're happy. So here he says, talking about uh, earlier uh, in, the, in his uh, uh, time, for if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and I want to mention this to you this morning, and I, I believe Brother Larry touched on it once or twice about the angels. Listen, he says they cast them down to hell. They were in heaven with the devil, and he was an archangel. He was a, uh, but he decided that he wanted to believe heaven. He wanted to overpower God, and he he caused angels to follow him a third part i believe it says and and they are now a lot of them are bound in hell and waiting for the judgment and so this morning you see the the uh the the uh frightfulness of this thing is when he says that the angels were cast down uh and 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 they lived they lived in a place a beautiful place and, and like heaven it was heaven and so they did, they pushed back from that, and he, the devil, deceived them. Now, if he can deceive devil, uh, angels, you know what he can do with this flesh? He can deceive it too. And so be careful with these things. And he says, and and, and goes on in, in verse uh, 5, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of ungodly, and turning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And so uh, people has no excuse. Right. Uh, if they were studying the Bible, if they would, if they would listen because God use this city destroying the city as an example and uh uh we have no we have no reason to but listen the world is full of the same thing as sodom that gomorrah was in they're doing the same things and uh they're conditioning themselves uh in the same way that they did and uh, and one cruel man uh, uh, uh got out and uh and his wife and them but listen he says here in verse 6, And turning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And so here again, it warns us this morning not to stay around, not to cater to these filthy conversations and all that with uh, all these filthy tv shows that you see on and all these conversations and all these tales back when i was young and all this thing listen it will vex your soul amen it will get you in a worse shape than you are and it won't help you a bit in this world so remember these things as you uh live day to day he says here he says he was he was just dwelling among them and seeing and hearing and so <coughs> vexed or tormented his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation Amen. and to preserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished it says here that the lord knoweth how to do this and so many people say well the lord the lord won't send me to hell I mean, he's a loving God. But listen, people, he's true. Amen. And, and what he, what his judgment is, is it, it's, it's straight. Amen. And, uh, uh, there's no, there's no getting around this. I know this this morning that he, he had mercy on us and he sent his son Jesus Christ to this world to die and to suffer all these things that he suffered for us. But now, when we die, lost. He's not going to say, well, come on in, I'll, I'll forgive you. Because listen, it's too late, people. It's too late. And so we need to, we need to get everything together while we're, while we're here on this earth and living. Now, we want to 
verse 10, and then we're going to try go over to another. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise governments, presumptuously, they are self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. And so these people that he's talking about here are lost. They're devil-possessed. And he says they're not afraid to. They're not. There's people out here that's not afraid to use God's name in vain. Right. There, there's there's people out here that's not uh, afraid to tell you that there's no God. Uh, and and so if they're that way, uh, they're 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 doomed for hell. And uh, only all we can do for them, we, a lot of times you can't even try to tell them, but you can pray for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the Holy Spirit can speak to their hearts. But anyway. The, and here he, he says this in verse 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, may be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that are they understand not, and Amen. they shall utterly perish in their own corruption. That tells you this morning what's going to happen to them this morning. I would, if you would, turn over to the book of Jude. We're going to read just a little bit over in the book of Jude. In verse, verse 4, he starts, well, he's, he's done leading up to it, but in verse 4 of Jude, he says, there, For there are certain men crept in unaware or secretly who were before of old ordained to this condemnation unto God, un, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so they're, they're still here, and, and, and Peter said, beware of them. And they're still here, these certain people. Amen. Uh, they breed uh, uncertain people, breed uncertain people, I guarantee you. Uh, and uh, hardly ever you see uh, uh, one that's brought, been brought up in this and come out of it, but it does happen. But here he's talking about back in Noah's time, and he says there were certain men uh, that crept into their uh, uh, their lives, and he says here, this is the condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lessons and denying the only Lord God. I will therefore, in verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. And so this morning, uh, you know, we need to we need to stay in in the will of the Lord and, and serve him as the best we can. Amen. Now, these people that he's talking about that come out of Egypt, listen, they never did accept the law. They never did accept anything. And when they got out there, they didn't accept him letting them bring them out of Egypt because they murmured and they grumbled and they I drove Moses crazy, and they never did. They never did get no better. And so he said, "Well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go so far." But he he took every one of them from twenty on down, and he destroyed. Mm -hmm. And here's what he's talking about here this morning. And he says in verse six, "And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, which is what Peter was talking about this morning. These angels left their first estate, which was heaven." but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And so here this morning, it, it warns, us, warns us again about lost people being, being sent to a, a, a devil's hell. Right. Listen, they're, they're, they're doomed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, have, we have loved ones. We have loved ones. And... Uh, uh, I, you know, I, I have enemies that I'd like to see uh, saved, but you know, it's it's I cannot be a witness to a lot of people because they don't want to be witnessed to mm -hmm. by me anyway. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we have all these all these uh, people that uh, we know and, and uh, uh, we we'll try to be a witness to them. We we'll try to be a help to them, but the more you try to help some of them. And trying to get close to them and to tell them about the Lord, the worse 
they feel towards you, right. the more they'll shun you. And so these are these are the ungodly uh, people, and he says uh, they're turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. And these is the ones that you that I can't help, and maybe I know somebody somewhere or another that the, the Lord can help them, and and hold through the Holy Spirit. But <clears throat> there's some of them that's that's uh, it's, it's condemned. And so he says here, after the first estate in heaven. But in verse 6, but left their own habitation, he has reserved an everlasting chains of darkness unto the good judgment of the great day. And so they'll stand before God and hear, depart from me, I never knew you. Now, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and Peter spoke of this, and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example. Right. There's the example again. And and God God is good to us. God is good to us because He sets examples before us and, and guides us in the way that we should go. And even as as Jesus Christ came to this world, He set Him as an example how that we should live and how that we should uh, honor God and, and how that we should uh, live our lives. And he says here, the, here and after going uh, after and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh or t to reject or despise dominion and speak mm -hmm. evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, but doth not bring again, again him a railing accusation, but said, "The Lord rebuke you." And so Amen. this this kind of this kind of is a uh, an example for us too, because uh, uh, you know a lot of times we we have things to happen in our life, and people mistreat us. And they uh, they don't treat us right, and uh, we we pray sometimes to the Lord. Well, Lord, I wish you'd just send them on somewhere where they're going. But listen, we don't need to do that. We need to say, Lord, if you would heal that man and save that man's soul, because listen, like he's saying here, when when the devil and the angels was uh, talking about Moses' body and and where it was and all this uh, and the and the he, they didn't uh, make a railing accusation against him. But anyway, <clears throat> he says here, but these speak evil of those things, in verse 10, which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after, greedily after the heir of Balaam, for rewards and perish, perishing in the gainsaying of Korah. And of course, we see in uh, number 16 about Korah, what she did, or what he did, and that he he fought against Moses, mm -hmm. and Moses <laughs> Moses had him taken care of because uh, he wouldn't, but the Lord took care of him and, and uh, opened up the earth, and the earth swallowed him whole. Right. And uh, he went and went down, I'm sure, to hell. Uh, to be what the others are. These are, it talks about these, he says, these are spots in your feast of charity, of love, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carrying about the wind, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Right. So it describes these these people here that that uh, are he, he compared them with Cain and Balaam and Korah. 
and all of these. He said, that's what they are. They're raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, also the servant of Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Amen to execute judgment upon all and to convict, convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against. These are murmurers. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this is a, a thing this morning that that we have a problem with, I have a problem with, and I, I'm sure there's a lot more people because I've uh, got the same flesh as everybody else, but murmuring. And if we're not very careful, we'll murmur, uh, we'll murmur when we, we should be praying. And uh, to murmur is, it's spoken of here as not doing it. Uh, you shouldn't do it. So he says, these are murmurers, and he's talking about all these People up here, complainers walking after their own lust and their mouth speaking great swelling words, having men, men's person in admiration because of advantage. So they, they murmur about these things and uh, they are walking after their own lust. They are, they are, de they are, they are devil servers and uh, they murmur about everything. And I, you know, there's some people that's would murmur if uh, if you told them you're going to give them a million dollars. Right. I'm just using that as an example, but that's that's the way it is. And then sometimes you come along and uh, hit your arm on something or other, you want to murmur. So, you know, it, it, that's that's murmuring. But listen, it's not pleasing to God. Amen. It's not pleasing to Him. So he says in verse 17, Beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles, of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told, how they told you there should be mockers in the last times who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, sensual having not the spirit, right, and that identifies them. But they love build, building up yourself. But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion, making a difference. Amen. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. And so this will conclude our lesson this morning, our reading. Uh, and, I, and there's a lot, of, a lot of things in here that uh, is examples. There's a lot of things in here that's warning us this morning about what we do. And, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you take close attention to it, you'll find out a lot of times that uh, we're guilty. And uh, we need to ask the Lord to forgive us. Amen. Stay in His will because uh, we don't want to be we don't want to be uh, unpleasant to God because as much love as He's loved us and and taken care of us and blessed us and you can't you can't sit down with a with a tablet and write all the things down that He does for us. Amen. And, stay. and so we need to try to uh, live close as we can to Him and obey Him and keep His word the best we can. Thank you for. Your attention. We appreciate it.